Uh, so is Ava conscious and conscious? Now, of course, it's a film. So we so we're kind of speculating. Uh, uh, you know, there's, there is, as it were, no fact of the matter there. And and very interestingly, if you ask um, uh, Alex Garland, because this is something the kind of thing that we discussed, a, a, you know, a fair bit. Uh, uh, when the film was being made and after it was finished and so on, then, you know, Alex would say that he's got his views and, you know, in, in, in his view, she is conscious and, and, um, and, and he, he sometimes, and I've heard him cite the smile that she offers at the end, right at the end of the film, as she's descending the stairs as um, a sort of evidence that she has some kind of genuine consciousness, but, you know, he'd be the first to say, but, you know, it's not, it's not, down to me even as the author to say of the script to say whether she is or not it's the kind of thing that's open to interpretation and mm. and and i think that that is um is uh, actually absolutely one of the reasons it's a great film is because it is open to interpretation he doesn't commit actually even though he's got his own views as it were he doesn't commit in the film to an answer to that question and i think that's that's uh, uh, you know a really important thing in fact many of the many of the works of literature that i most admire leave things open like that some wonderful books like henry james's the turn of the screw you know do if you are you know the turn of the screw where and you know the, you're never sure at the end whether the um uh, whether the governess is is actually seeing ghosts uh, uh or, or is kind of insane um and whether she's kind of um you know got pedophilic tendencies and, and, and right. so it's this, this or not and so it's this horrible kind of mixture you don't know there's all these horrible things and you don't know which one is the truth and henry james brilliantly never ever tells you which is the truth so it's left to us right to argue about it which is kind of very interesting and fun so the same with ex machina i think so 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 you don't you know it, it's the film doesn't tell you mm -hmm. and in fact there was a scene that was um, that is in the original script that never appeared in the final uh, film where um, uh, so so I, I don't know uh, you, well you've just seen it so you'll remember that right at the end she goes off uh, in the helicopter so the helicopter lands in the, in Nathan's estate Nathan being the you know the billionaire who's developed Ava uh, the robot maybe we need to provide a plot summary for people who haven't seen it but anyway <laughs> so, <laughs> so so and Ava the the, the robot so she, she's you know physically indistinguishable from a human and and she's talking to the um uh to the helicopter um pilot and obviously persuading him to give her a lift out uh, out of the uh, out of there and in the script um it says that uh, uh the original script it says that at that point we see all these kind of uh strange kind of we see in, uh, inside Ava's head in a way right you see the the the, the sort of uh you see the the um sounds that he's making when he's when he's speaking you see them as just kind of uh you know sound waves and glitches and fuzzes and you hear and and, and it's and it's meant to kind of portray uh the inside of of Ava's head in a way and and Alex Garland has in the script this remark that it is utterly alien and uh, and um, so that, but um, for, I think partly for kind of technical reasons, they didn't know how to kind of make it turn out right, because the first screening I saw had a version of that actually there, but they never appeared in the final cut. Mm. And um, uh, but I thought that scene uh, was very telling because you see, if you'd left that in, that would have you, you know you really might that really might have made you question more whether she is conscious. Yeah, you bringing that up now makes me wish that scene was in the movie because that yeah, would be I, questioning so much more. Yeah, I wish that scene was in the movie as well. I mean, it, it was a it was a great scene uh, in 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 conception, you know, but hard to kind of make work. I think cinematically, it, it was two obviously great scientific slash philosophical points in the in the film where um, they're, Nathan they're talking about the Turing test is one of them. The other one was Mary's room. So, uh, what are your thoughts on these two specifically? These just yeah. your general idea regarding these two thought experiments. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So sure. So okay. So the Turing test. Um, so the Turing test, I, I think, uh, is a terrible test of intelligence, um, and uh, and maybe uh, uh, you know, and, and that's primarily because 
it's a test of, of something completely disembodied. It's, it's a disembodied test. So you're only testing the kind of linguistic intelligence. Now, this, of course, is extremely relevant today because in the context of large language models, this is very much the position we're in with, with, uh, with you know, lar large language model based uh, chatbots. All we have is that linguistic interface for them. So, so we're in that, that exact situation. But it doesn't test for you know, embodied intelligence. And we are first and foremost embodied creatures and um, and our evolutionary ancestors, a lot of their intelligence and cognitive capabilities is bound up with the ability to navigate and uh, the ordinary everyday world um, of, of physical objects and manipulate that world of physical objects. And, uh, and our fellow uh, creatures, you know, inhabit the same world as us. And so this is the, this is the, you know, like a of primal uh, importance. So the Turing test doesn't test any of those embodied uh, capabilities. So I've always thought it was a very poor actual test. Now, of course, I'm a huge admirer of, of, of Turing and, and the paper itself at the time, you know, was a work of, 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 of genius. And I hugely admire uh, the paper. And it was a, in its, it's, it's a terrific uh, you know, conversation starter, philosophically speaking, uh, and and in my view, very much influenced by Wittgenstein, actually, because the first, the opening move that he makes in the paper is kind of the same opening move that's made in the philosophical investigations. So in the philosophical investigations, Wittgenstein says, basically, don't ask what the word means, rather ask how the word is used. And and so he's kind of, say, he's, he's substituting the question you want to ask for a different question, which maybe you should ask and is more productive to ask. And Turing does exactly the same in the beginning of, of, uh, of um, computing machinery and, and, and intelligence. He says, um, uh, uh, he says, you know, let's not ask, could a machine think, but rather let's ask this question about whether it could pass this, this test. So he's substituting a philosophically impossibly difficult question for one that's kind of more operationalizable, if you like. And of course, they they did, um, uh, um, you know, Turing was attending Wittgenstein's lectures. So I do think there may be some direct influence there. Mm. So, so, so Ex Machina came out shortly after Her, after Spike Jones's film Her. Uh, and at the time, I really didn't like Her. Um, I thought I, 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 you know, I, I mean, and one of the reasons was I just thought that, you know, you, 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 we're not going to be able to build those kinds of things in this sort of disembodied way. I mean, we don't really know how it's actually built there, but the but the, the manifestation of it is a disembodied kind of manifestation just in the foam, you know. Um, so, I, so I was a bit skeptical about the, you know, the lack of embodiment there, but I was even more skeptical about the idea that people could, you know, develop these relationships with, uh, um, you know, with, uh, this kind of disembodied uh, uh, AI. I thought, God, you know, really? You know, I just thought it was, I just didn't think it was very plausible. I mean, you know, how wrong could I have been? I mean, I just, yeah. I, I mean, I really misjudged humanity there, <laughs> uh, I, I feel. So, uh, so, so, you know, so with hindsight, I, I mean, I think, I, I think, no, I still think Ex Machina is a, is, is of course the better film, but 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 nevertheless, I have to admit that I was wrong about her. Uh, and with hindsight, it was a great film, and it was uh, it was prescient in a way that Ex Machina is not yet um, prescient. Um, I still think Ex Machina dealt with um, some dealt with the, the philosophical questions and 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 and, and brought up philosophical questions you know maybe better than than her did but mm. certainly her seems to have see you know is more relevant in some ways to um more directly right just because of the just because of the um you know the format of the uh, of the ai it's in this disembodied um uh, you know sort of setting uh, so, but anyway, but that was not, doesn't quite address your question, but uh, but but sort of, I, I guess. So, yeah, I, and I think yeah. one of the uh, quite a cool philosophical scenario in her is towards the very end, where this, this entity they all get together and then just us leave us all. <laughs> we don't know yeah. what the hell is going on. Where are they? What's right, it? Right, right. That's, that's yeah, yeah. Pretty, I, I think pretty deep philosophical question. I agree, and I, that that was one. I thought the towards the end of the film that then then uh, he certainly brought up some you know some much much uh, deeper issues. I mean, there was a, there's the great line where um, uh, who is it? Joaquin Phoenix is the actor, right? It says um, uh, says oh, so so 
you know, so how many people are you in love with? And she says, oh, currently, you know, 4,220 or something, something like that. And, uh, and, and uh, which I, you know, I, I thought was, that was a great line. Um, that, yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a line in, in Ex Machina in the script where, um, um, which I thought was a really, really great line, uh, which is the bit where um, uh, Nathan uh, and uh, it, it says, well, we're not doing a Turing test. The point here is because in the Turing test, you can see, uh, you can't see what, you know, what, what, which yeah. is the AI, but, but here we show you that you can see that she's a robot. And the point is to see whether you still think she's conscious. So that's, I call that the Garland test rather than the Turing test, because I think it's a completely different test. And when, when in the script, um, uh, that I, I wrote spot on when at that bit because I thought it was such a great line, um, and and you know, and I really think that Alex kind of you know in, almost invented or certainly articulated a, a completely new test in that in that line in that film, yes. uh, and other people use that um, uh, uh, as an example of this now, and call it the Garland test. Um, uh, but anyway, in her, I think that was the line where if I'd read the script, I would have written spot on um, mm. with the bit where, where she says, oh, I, I'm talking to like, I'm in love with 4,000, you know, because then suddenly the alienness mm. of the AI is, is, is suddenly exposed. And, and, uh, and, and that was, you know, a great moment, I think, in the film.